So thank you everybody for uh, being connected uh, today. Let me present you my paper. Uh, this is entitled Migrants Crisis and the Local News Market Evidence from the French Italian Border. So the motivation of this paper is the following. So as you may all already know, Europe in the recent years experienced a, an unprecedented surge in uh, uh, migrants in the so-called migration crisis, uh, migrants coming from different uh, uh, countries uh, of the world that were experiencing high levels of political and economic instability. Those migrants were reaching uh, the European lands. Italy, in particular, was experiencing peaks in these migration inflows in the years uh, 2014 and 2015. And uh, migrants uh, reaching Italy were coming from the so-called Central Mediterranean route. So they were leaving the Libyan coasts, uh, principally, and reaching the southern uh, lands. So this set of events sparked uh, a great uh, public debate uh, on the topic that resulted also into uh, a great uh, media attention. In particular here, you can see in this figure uh, for uh, the Italian Associated Press uh, articles that contain uh, the word uh, migrants. This is a monthly um, time series uh, uh, that you can see, and uh, you may see a big peak uh, in the last period of 2015. So several authors uh, suggested that the success of uh, anti-immigrant parties uh, that uh, was uh, found in the recent years uh, in several European countries was linked to the direct exposure of natives uh, to these migrants' inflows. However, some other contributions suggested uh, on the key role of media as persuasive and diffusive uh, mechanisms uh, in shaping the, the attitudes uh, of people. Importantly, however, media firms, and here I will talk about the news market in particular, do not choose on supply exogenously. There are uh, several key determinants, in particular uh, competition forces and the expected demand, so readership beliefs. Uh, from the communication literature, there are these uh, uh, two notions. Uh, one is this concept of agenda setting that answers the question how much to cover a particular topic, and then there is this framing dimension, how to describe it, which position to take. Within this framing dimension, there are these two uh, connected notions, uh, that of uh, media bias uh, and that of media slant, that here, following uh, some authors, I will use interchangeably. So uh, what is a media slant? Let me give you uh, an example. So on the left-hand side, you can see uh, an headline that comes from a, a, a national outlet in Italy that takes a, a very uh, strong anti-immigrant uh, position. And uh, on the right-hand side, you can, say, you can see the same uh, article reported in a more neutral fashion. Than, and, and this article comes from uh, the Italian Associated Pre uh, Press. So uh, the, both articles uh, talk about uh, a crime that occurred in uh, the New Year's Eve of, of this year. And the perpetrator in, uh, in the um, uh, anti-immigrant outlet was described uh, since the beginning as uh, a troglodyte. So uh, in here, the research question is uh, how local shocks in the presence of migrants impact the local news market. And uh, 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 subsequently, how uh, the news patterns, uh, if any, extend to the local political economy. The context uh, of uh, interest is a particular um, historical and geographical uh, context. Um, in June 2015, the French local authorities introduced systematic militarized uh, controls at their border uh, with, with Italy. So these uh, uh, controls resulted into, were aimed at and resulted into consistent pushbacks of migrants to the Italian lands that were particularly um, consistent in the uh, coastal border. So migrants from the central Mediterranean coasts were arriving uh, from Libya by sea and reaching the southern uh, lands. They were exposed uh, to a reception system that uh, got reinforced in the 2014 in Italy, but uh, uh, beyond this uh, reception system, many of these uh, migrants attempted continuing their, their journey, so bypassing this uh, regularization uh, status. So uh, these uh, pushbacks uh, of migrants into the Italian lands resulted into uh, a consistent backlog in the coastal border. This was uh, uh, previously an important uh, gateway for these migrants uh, that were attempting reaching uh, other destinations, 
because uh, of uh, the morphology of this region. So you have uh, the Alps uh, on the north and the seaside on the south of the region of Liguria uh, that shapes, uh, that gives the shape to the region. So this was importantly not the only gateway uh, that migrants used, but was an important one. So this situation protracted over time, although with some seasonality, and importantly, um, the ONG, some ONGs uh, um, were uh, on the spot quite, uh, um, uh, quite soon, and also the local authorities uh, arrived at some point to provide some partial uh, uh, measures that, uh, however, didn't solve fully the situation. So here, um, the contribution is the following. So by uh, combining text analysis, uh, analysis tools and a quasi-experimental setting, uh, this paper provides uh, causal evidence on how immigration shocks can impact uh, uh, media discourse. And then uh, I also aim at providing some suggested, uh, suggestive evidence on how this media discourse relates uh, with uh, individual attitudes and the local political economy. To summarize the main findings, what I see is that uh, the pushback policy affected positively the local news coverage, so the coverage increased the most in the areas that were most exposed to this migrant's presence. However, I also uh, see that anti-migrant slant is uh, increasing the further away from uh, the border. In particular, I find that a 10 minutes increase in commuting distance increases land by 0.13 standard deviation. So uh, in a way to uh, try to rationalize this finding, I have a look at a measure uh, of uh, a proxy of uh, uh, local news relative penetration. And I see that this goes in the same direction of slant, suggesting some possible demand push for uh, the so-called uh, confirmatory news. So news that uh, uh, accommodate uh, uh, readers' uh, pre-existing beliefs. What I also see is uh, when looking at voting patterns and hate crime trends, uh, these patterns seem to, to take the same direction of the slant direction, uh, suggesting that uh, what happens uh, in the media also happens in the local political economy. So uh, the uh, related literature is uh, uh, the following. So there are at least three stands uh, that are related to this paper. One uh, is the strand that looks at the news market and the drivers uh, of uh, media supply and, and media discourse. And then this, uh, um, there are several uh, theoretical contributions in this trend and some empirical ones that tend to focus uh, in the US setting. Then there is this uh, media persuasion uh, literature. One of these uh, uh, contributions was uh, relatively recently presented in this very same uh, seminar. And they, um, these uh, um, contributions uh, um, identify a key role in uh, uh, the news media in uh, shaping the attitudes and political preferences. Differently uh, from uh, them, this paper endogenizes this uh, media supply. Then there is this uh, third strand that is very rich, but also surging in the recent uh, period that looks at the impacts of migrants and refugees presence or proximity in shaping the locals' uh, attitudes. And uh, in this rich literature, there is uh, one in particular that is uh, Stenmeier uh, 2020, that gives uh, uh, a distinction between uh, mere exposure to minorities and repeated contact with them. This uh, uh, paradigm comes from um, uh, the contact theory that is a theory that comes from uh, psychology. So uh, Stenmeier finds opposite effects in the sense that repeated contact enhances more empathy versus exposure that leads to more uh, anti-immigrant attitudes. So in my paper in particular, I focus on a very localized setting and I consider uh, two provinces uh, in, the, in this region uh, of Liguria. I consider uh, Imperia, which is the border province, and Savona, which is the next to border province. And I consider the years 2011 up to 2019. So I collect all possible uh, local online news that contain uh, the, stem, uh, the keywords um, that are migrant, immigrant, foreigner, non-EU citizen, or refugee. So the procedure here uh, was really to target individually each uh, possible local news source and use some web crawlers to obtain uh, the text information for uh, this news. 
How did I uh, obtain the universe of the local uh, online newspapers? Uh, I combined simple Google searches with uh, uh, a tool that is present in Google Trends that is called correlated searches. So once I collect uh, roughly 50,000 uh, local uh, news uh, articles uh, in this uh, area of interest for this period of interest, I need to assign them a particular geography uh, to understand where uh, they were really uh, relevant in this area. So to do that, I do not observe uh, uh, directly this uh, news consumption. And uh, so what I do is to build a proxy uh, for this news consumption. Uh, this proxy involves looking again at the uh, Google Trends and to search for each particular source in Google Trends, which uh, allows me to retrieve a ranking of uh, all uh, possible municipalities for which there was some uh, search for this particular source. And by this ranking, uh, I will translate this ranking into weights uh, to understand which articles uh, matter more for each municipality. So in the end, what I obtain is a, a municipality month year level panel. There is also a second step that I perform that involves some imputation because uh, Google Trends uh, um, information is uh, left censored, but I, um, I check for my baseline results uh, um, on whether they hold uh, uh, without this imputation measure. So this is my uh, empirical analysis. So uh, as you can see, uh, this is a, a reduced form uh, diff in diff uh, strategy. I have that uh, um, the media outcome of interest uh, on the left-hand side is a linear function of a municipality fixed effects, month-year fixed effects. And then I have my interaction of interest, which is an interaction between this post-June 2015 dummy with uh, a measure of commuting distance uh, in minutes to the border. In terms of controls, I have uh, controls that uh, um, uh, relate to the news. So I have total news, I have an average word count uh, per outlet. Then I have, uh, in terms of demography, population and old, uh, old age uh, population rate. I have uh, uh, immigration um, stocks, uh, inflows and outflows. I have average taxable income per capita, and I have a measure of prime rates, though this only varies, unfortunately, by province and year level. Then I have a couple of time invariant uh, um, variables that I use for some extended results as well. So here, my baseline uh, outcomes uh, in terms of this uh, uh, media uh, supply are in this agenda setting dimension. Uh, account of uh, uh, news uh, the, uh, of migration related news that I call news coverage. And then I also have a second measure that is a little bit more secondary in this paper, um, but it's worth, worth mentioning, that is a measure of news importance. So this uh, um, index is a composite uh, index composed by a novelty index and an impactfulness index. And I will talk a little bit more in a moment about this. So secondly, for my framing dimension, I have uh, this uh, um, anti-immigrant slant index, which is basically a proportion of uh, uh, local news that in that particular areas, area were uh, uh, predicted to be having an uh, anti-immigrant slant. So in terms of uh, the identification strategy, as you may have guessed uh, from uh, the equation before, I uh, proxy this uh, uh, native's exposure to the border policy events with a linear distance in commuting time. For robustness, I uh, check for, for uh, other possible uh, functional forms. So uh, what are these uh, uh, news-based uh, measures? So there is this uh, news importance uh, measure that I mentioned a little ago. This is a, a measure that comes from the patent literature, and in particular, Kelly and Olders, uh, 2018, who construct an index of uh, patent importance. So this importance measure is uh, uh, the product of two indices, a novelty and an impactfulness index. And uh, these indices are built uh, to co um, by comparing text similarities of the articles uh, of a particular article with future uh, articles and uh, uh, past articles. So a high novelty for a particular article means low similarity with previous previous publications in terms of text frequencies. And higher impactfulness means high similarities with uh, future patents. The combination of the two leads to this uh, uh, importance, uh, news importance. 
So uh, what is interesting to see in this graph is that uh, uh, when I try to plot this uh, uh, index over time, I do see that uh, it uh, well uh, identifies uh, a peak uh, in uh, uh, the month uh, of uh, the events. So how uh, do I construct the uh, anti-immigrant uh, slant uh, measure? So this is a binary classification algorithm that uh, involves uh, a supervised uh, machine learning approach. So what I aim to do is to classify uh, articles into a zero or a one, where zero means uh, this article is predicted to be uh, having an anti-immigrant slant and zero otherwise. So um, this uh, uh, procedure involves uh, relying on a training sample where the information is uh, already uh, um, labeled in a, a zero or a one, and then to uh, allow a particular model to build predictions based on the text frequencies in this training sample. So um, in order to construct this training sample, I use a national and regional news that contain uh, already, or um, sorry, that uh, are already having some evidence uh, of uh, anti-immigrant slant or not. So uh, to do that, I base uh, at source level, I find two sources uh, that contain uh, evident uh, anti-immigrant slant and, and two sources that do not contain that. And I base this choice on direct evidence and on a survey that comes from uh, YouGov uh, uh, on uh, respondents that judge uh, the level of uh, uh, from left to right uh, on a particular set of national outlets. So in the end, I have a training sample that contains 50-50 uh, zero labeled and one labeled instances. And in order to validate this measure, I proceed with a uh, ten-folded cross-validation on the label set. Plus, subsequently, I also compare with uh, human classification. So in the end, I um, I propose two different models. One is a model that it comes from Teddy and others, uh, 2013. This is a model that has been used already in, uh, in this uh, setting of uh, uh, media slant uh, uh, contributions. And uh, uh, I have a second measure that uh, is uh, basically an, an elastic net, which, is, uh, 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 which involves a penalized logistic uh, regression, where this penalization is a mix between uh, ridge and lasso, and uh, how much you take from e either of these uh, uh, two uh, uh, models uh, is uh, uh, in some sort of optimized uh, given some, some procedure. So uh, in the end, so this comparison with human classification involves uh, asking to uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk uh, respondents, so this uh, platform that allows you to ask uh, simple and quick uh, tasks uh, to respondents. Uh, and I asked the uh, um, respondents to classify 1,000, roughly 1,000 uh, of uh, my uh, local news articles uh, into having or not uh, a slant. So in this case, interesting, inter, interestingly, um, so I asked uh, the same question to two uh, respondents, so I could uh, have some minimum level of heterogeneity, and uh, uh, respondents uh, disagreed in uh, almost 30% of the cases in assigning slant, which suggests that, that uh, the task of assigning slant is uh, um, possibly um, influenced also by pr uh, prior ideology. So overall, what I see is that there is some measurement error in my um, index, but broadly speaking, I have a, a roughly satisfactory results. So just to show you uh, the means over time of uh, these uh, uh, three measures, I decomposed uh, uh, these um, um, uh, this uh, means by because I have a continuous uh, distance uh, um, measure, I decompose them uh, into five be, uh, five uh, minutes beans uh, of uh, distance. So this was the coverage measure. This is the importance measure, and this is uh, the slant uh, uh, measure. So uh, just to continue on the slant measure, this is a, a plot over time uh, of the uh, anti-immigrant slant. As you can see, there is a, broadly speaking, a, a growing pattern. So here are my uh, baseline results that I anticipated uh, already before. So what I see is that on the top of the uh, table, I have results uh, uh, concerning the news uh, coverage. 
And I find a negative coefficient implying that for a 10 minutes increase in uh, this border distance after the policy resulted into a lower 11% uh, of uh, uh, migrant related news, uh, suggesting that uh, this coverage was uh, much more present uh, in the border areas. Then I have a similar result for uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, direction uh, for my uh, news importance measure, although uh, the size uh, and the significance is a bit more uh, less satisfactory. Then what I see uh, is here the results uh, for my uh, anti-immigrant slant. And here what I see is that the coefficient is positive, positive and uh, significant, suggested suggesting that an increase uh, in uh, 10 minutes uh, uh, for this border distance uh, results into 0.13 to 0.11 standard deviations. So in, a, um, in aiming to uh, rationalize uh, on these results, I try to look uh, into some mechanisms. And what I try to do is to construct a measure of local versus uh, national uh, outlets penetration. So again, here, what I do is to look uh, at Google Trends uh, patterns and to construct a measure uh, for each possible source that I use uh, to see how many searches are in Google for that uh, news compared to uh, some four, of four main uh, national uh, uh, news outlets. And I uh, consider Il Fatto Quotidiano, La Repubblica, La Stampa e Il Giornale. So as you may see here, uh, different colors uh, mean uh, different uh, sources that uh, are included in my uh, data set. So what I see is that uh, this uh, local news uh, relative penetration does increase in the same direction of slant. This is uh, an event study uh, analysis that uh, plots there. I can see that this pattern even increases uh, more over time, but has a positive uh, uh, coefficient on the uh, post uh, uh, period. And then uh, what I uh, also try to look at is whether slant and this uh, relative penetration go uh, reinforce each other. And here you can see that for every possible uh, column, I add a, a possible triple uh, difference in this uh, rightmost side of this table. Uh, which contains so uh, um, a possible uh, one of these uh, four um, uh, relative penetration measures. And then um, here they, they are added only as controls and here they are also added uh, in terms of this uh, uh, third difference. And on the fifth column, it's uh, uh, the results that uh, uh, take into consideration a, a PCA based uh, score, so uh, principal component analysis that, that returns, that basically reduces the dimensionality of these uh, four scores. So here uh, I will focus on this uh, 10th column, and I find that this uh, triple uh, difference uh, coefficient is uh, positive and significant, uh, significant indicated that uh, uh, this uh, um, distance effect is even more reinforced whenever there is this uh, higher um, local relative penetration. Sorry, so, Silvia? Uh, yes. Yeah, there's a question uh, in yeah. the chat. So do you know what happened uh, to migrants after the treatment? Like, do, did they stay close to the border or were relocated somewhere else? Yes. So. Um, at some point, there, were, there was a, a bus system that was established to uh, relocate some of these migrants uh, to the main hotspots uh, in Italy. So this, is this was one of the measures that was taken. However, mm, most, so part of these migrants uh, were uh, taken to a reception center in the area. M many of them decided to stay and uh, sheltered uh, somewhere um, in a precarious situation uh, because uh, uh, Again, having their status uh, recognized meant, uh, means uh, uh, going through a process that may, might have uh, um, you know, put them back uh, to the reception systems uh, at the beginning. Um, so that it was a, so I don't have the precise numbers, but I have some um, qualitative evidence that uh, some migrants uh, stayed in the area. Some of them tried to uh, reach uh, the, these destinations uh, through uh, other routes and they took more the Alps uh, um, and tried, tried to search for some alternative paths. So that, that also is something that happened. So uh, there was a mix uh, of uh, events uh, that occurred, uh, but um, yes, what, what seems uh, not to have happened 
too much is that the migrants uh, uh, somehow uh, expanded uh, uh, in the opposite uh, distance relationship. So it didn't seem that they sorted uh, uh, along the distance, uh, along other um, municipalities in the area. So, um, yes, so um, can I continue or should I? Uh... Yes, I think it's okay. Uh, okay. So uh, one possible interpretation that I give uh, Silvia, is... Silvia, sorry, scared you. I have yes. a question. Yes. So do you, do you take questions during the presentations or at the end? Sorry. Um, clarificatory, clarificatory, clarificatory questions. I think I can take them now. Okay, then... so clarification question and then comment. So why, why you uh, mentioned that for you, local versus national outlet is the mechanism? Uh, do you have in mind some kind of contact uh, theory? And can you, can you um, measure this? Or is just you are, uh, just, just, just to, uh, to clarify me why you think this is the mechanism and how, so, how do you uh, estimate the mechanism? So uh, this is, a, um, so this procedure comes from the fact that uh, there is a, a one paper that, uh, which is this one, uh, George and uh, Wald uh, Fogel, that uh, demonstrates that local news tend to uh, position their discourse uh, with respect to national news. Uh, so that's why I was trying to investigate on this uh, channel a little bit better. But in terms of uh, how this uh, relates to different exposures to the migrants, um, yes, the, the way that I try to argue is that there is a demand for uh, confirmatory news, so uh, news that uh, uh, accommodate the beliefs uh, of people. And the fact that uh, these uh, um, beliefs uh, of people are, um, are differently present along these uh, uh, along these different exposure uh, measures may come from the fact that there is an ONG presence uh, uh, at the border. There are some cultural events that pushes this uh, slant uh, down more at the border. Where well, whilst uh, further away from the border, this uh, uh, local confirmatory news can position uh, a bit more uh, uniformly in this uh, anti-migrant land. And this allows them to penetrate more vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis the national news. I don't know if this is a... Uh... Yes, thanks. Thanks, clear. Okay. So this is a little bit uh, uh, the idea that I try to push forward that would be uh, also in line with the contact versus ex exposure uh, paradigm by Stenmeier 2020 and by Alport uh, originally in the psychology literature. So uh, what are two connected uh, facts that I find to uh, non-causally suggest uh, this uh, uh, link? Um, so when I try to look at uh, voting outcomes, uh, I see that uh, um, at coalition level, uh, so here I compare uh, 2013 general elections uh, versus 2018 general elections uh, for the area. And I see that the right-wing coalition gains uh, uh, some support. This is in terms of vote shares uh, at the expenses of left-wing coalition. I don't see this at the level of the most explicit anti-immigrant parties but I see it at the level of, so, okay, at the turnout, uh, turnout level as well, but I see it uh, uh, for um, the former Berlusconi's uh, party at the, expense, uh, at the expenses of the um, uh, Democratic Party. And I see also some uh, similar uh, positive coefficient on the Five Star Movement uh, as well. And here, what I try to do uh, in this uh, downside part of this table is to disentangle these results by, um, uh, so by um, differences in this uh, slant measure and th these differences uh, in terms of uh, uh, border distance. And uh, here, uh, what I tend to see is some possible uh, right uh, to uh, right uh, shift. Um, so yeah. when I, yes. You have about 10 minutes left. Thank you so much. So I have uh, um, also checked uh, um, graphically, so not uh, uh, in terms of uh, inference, uh, uh, patterns in hate crime trends over time. And I used uh, a database uh, called Lunaria that uh, is uh, used, uh, for example, in a paper by Romari 2020. And uh, here, what I see a little bit more qualitatively is that the border province, uh, the border provinces in pink, 
and the next to border provinces in blue. So I see some differential that tends to go in the same direction of this length. So the non-border province tends to have this uh, uh, more higher uh, increase. So uh, finally, I conducted uh, some extended results uh, on this uh, set of findings. So what I tried to do is to look at whether there are some heterogeneities in terms uh, of uh, um, uh, municipality characteristics uh, that, uh, um, I don't, so for these characteristics, I don't have a time variation necessarily. Uh, what I see, for example, uh, that is uh, relatively interesting, I see that for the anti-immigrant slant, uh, this uh, um, interaction coefficient is even stronger, the stronger the uh, previous levels uh, of uh, uh, right-wing uh, support. And uh, roughly speaking, I see also uh, a very small but positive coefficient on the same uh, in, in triple uh, term for unemployment rates. Uh, then I try to look at provincial uh, level time trends uh, to test a little bit the robustness of these effects uh, for possible different uh, linear time trends by province. And here I find similar results. Then I try to have a little discussion on uh, the external validity, given that uh, this is such a uh, local setting. And in terms of, uh, so I basically what I do is to try to check uh, the distribution of several characteristics uh, for all uh, provinces in Italy. And where do these uh, two provinces that I care about uh, li li lie in this uh, distribution? So here, what I see is that, uh, for example, for this uh, first uh, uh, graph, this uh, graph presents uh, the percentage of uh, commuters that commute within Italy. So the red dotted line is uh, the province of uh, Imperia, the border province. So as you may uh, said, um, as you may guess, this is a border province, and there is a lot of uh, connection with France. Uh, so um, there, are, there is a relatively uh, a lot of commuters uh, that are cross-border commuters as compared uh, uh, as the other province uh, and the rest uh, of Italy, which suggests that this uh, uh, distance-based uh, uh, degrees of exposure could make sense for uh, this study. Then uh, what I also try to look is whether this, uh, how this uh, area is placed in terms of uh, uh, political preferences. So this area tends to be uh, a little bit more uh, right-wing already compared to maybe other areas in Italy. Uh, so you can see, for example, here that the votes for the right-wing coalition are already on the uh, right-hand side and here as well for the year 2008. So, uh, next, uh, what I try to do is to uh, look at uh, whether uh, not taking the continuous distance, but uh, taking a uh, possible dummy for distance uh, would uh, uh, give me um, different results. I might see some uh, um, nonlinear patterns that uh, um, appear, but uh, broadly speaking, uh, for so this would be the coverage measure, this would be the uh, importance measure, and this would be the slant. Here I see that for uh, the importance uh, uh, measure, possibly this result uh, is uh, the most nonlinear and disappears after some uh, distance uh, threshold. Uh, so uh, what else did I try uh, to do? Uh, yes, I tried to look at different uh, outcome measures, uh, uh, sorry, variation on the way I, I was doing this uh, slant prediction. So I took, uh, uh, for most of my uh, baseline results, I took uh, the one of the two models that gave me slightly better results in terms of this uh, predictive performance. And here I take uh, the alternative one and I have the results uh, that uh, stay stable to that. And then here I try different uh, thresholds for uh, assigning uh, labels given a predicting probability. Um, here, what I try to do is to use directly these predictive probabilities uh, in uh, uh, the regression. And uh, uh, further, what I try to do is a placebo on the measurement, basically from my training sample, I uh, try to assign uh, the zeros and the ones randomly. So not anymore given the sources, but randomly. And by doing that, I do not find uh, that the coefficient uh, holds. Uh, finally, what I try to have a look at is uh, an event study analysis. So this is the result for coverage. 
uh, this is the result for importance. So I do not really see uh, um, result for the importance measure. And this is the uh, result for the event study analysis uh, where I do not really find uh, uh, the same pattern that I see clearly as for the coverage measure. I see some positive uh, uh, and significant coefficient uh, here. And I see roughly speaking uh, a growing uh, pattern uh, for the two. So uh, lastly, I test the results to the exclusion of one municipality and exclusion of one month, and the results uh, tend to um, stay uh, robust to this uh, uh, sensitivity check. So just, to, uh, just a word to conclude, uh, local news uh, do react to uh, the migrant crisis by adjusting their quantity and quality of discourse, and uh, uh, a motive a possible motive for these adjustments is based on the on a taste for confirmatory news. So accommodating ideology, uh, local news slant differs by the decrease uh, of exposure to minorities in precarious status, and local policies encouraging interaction with minorities may stimulate higher tolerance, both in the demand and the supply of uh, ideology in the news. Thank you, guys. I'm ready for taking questions. Thank you, Celia, for a very nice presentation and uh, yeah, a lot of results and a lot of work behind, uh, obviously. So now, yes, yeah, so it's time for the Q&A uh, session. So if you want to ask a question, just raise your virtual, virtual hand and I will allow you to unmute yourself. So I think, Giacomo, you have a, a question already? Yeah, I do have a question. I, I, I have a couple of questions, actually. Uh, well, first of all, nice to meet you, Silvia, very, very nice work. Um, so. I have two questions. One is about uh, the coverage. I may have lost it, but uh, I wanted to know how much uh, of the newspapers and then the news you're actually able to measure in your data set and well, what's the relation of the subset you're covering uh, and, and the total in terms of you know, political leaning, et cetera. So that's, that's the first question. Yes. Um, and and I'll, I'll go on and ask also the second, yes. um, which is, <clears throat> so, I understand that uh, in a nutshell, your result is that uh, um, the degree to which the, um, the so-called migration crisis uh, impacted the uh, news availability about migrants in the area and the land um, correlates with the distance from the border. So one question that I had in mind is, uh, are, so how do these areas, uh, so is there a gradient in terms of how the, these areas look like. Um, so for example, are areas farther away from France, uh, more to the right? And if so, could this explain a part of the variation you find in the data? Yes. So uh, thank you, Giacomo, and thanks a lot for your questions. So uh, your first question was about uh, how much of this local news uh, uh, um, am I able to capture with respect to the total of the local news? So uh, I would say uh, is the quasi universe of the local news in the area of interest. I conducted the data collection in 2021. 20, uh, so there were a couple of uh, uh, these uh, uh, local news uh, uh, website that were discontinued. But to the best of my knowledge, this was a um, uh, negligible uh, amount. And for the rest of them, it's a really uh, localized area. So um, I, I really took uh, everything that uh, was available. So I didn't, uh, um, uh, I didn't miss uh, uh, as long as uh, you know, my, my procedure worked uh, and uh, I tried to be as extensive as possible in uh, uh, taking all possible sources th that were available at the time. And these, of course, are uh, uh, local online news so there is some sort of selection already in looking at uh, you know online and local news uh, and uh, non offline for example but what i see is uh, uh, i do not have it here in the slides but i have a look at uh, uh, how much uh, people in the area and uh, i think that uh, i can do it at regional level if i remember well how much uh, people in the area tend to read the uh, news uh, uh, and tend to use the internet, first of all, and tend to read news in the internet. And I find uh, uh, satisfactory results in the sense that uh, uh, the, this region seems to have uh, higher levels uh, with respect to the uh, Italian average. So I would say that uh, people tend to read the news uh, uh, online in this uh, particular area. And coming, from your, uh, coming to your uh, second question, 
um, that was about the areas further away being possibly more right wing. No, it's, if anything, is the opposite that I see in a, when I plot uh, the um, um, here the uh, votes uh, in the previous periods for uh, right wing. Uh, so uh, I th I think that broadly speaking, it was an area whereby the uh, five star movement in 2013 had a success. So um, it, it was a particular success for that uh, movement. Uh, but other than that, I see that if anything, so in 2013, here is uh, where um, Savona, so the next to border province lies, and here is uh, where uh, the border province lies uh, in the distribution of, uh, of percentage votes for right wing coalition in 2013. And here you can see for uh, the previous elections, the previous general elections, and I see that Imperia, so the, the one closest to the border, had uh, uh, the higher right wing support. So yes, it's I, I do not find that those areas were already more uh, inclined to uh, uh, right wing. In terms of uh, external validity, I agree that uh, the study um, looks at an area that has already maybe uh, uh, a negative attitude already. So that should be taken in my, uh, should be uh, taken into account when uh, uh, considering these results. Thanks a lot for your answers. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Skadi, I see you have a question. Yes. So I have two comments, uh, yes. Silvia. Yes. Um, so I have read the, oh, the paper already, and and uh, and I see that you have further improved it, and it's really nice, Silvia. I like it very much. It's very rich. There's there's lots of things inside. Uh, um, I have two. Something new that I thought about uh, that we haven't discussed before, that I thought about this now. Yes, uh, the, is the following. So, uh, can you somehow argue about the size of the effect? So, the size of uh, of the of the effect of the shock on the newspapers, and then the size of this uh, transmitted into the in the in the voting uh, behavior and in the results of the coalitions. So, I was thinking for the first one, do you is it possible to compare the, the, the somehow the, the coefficient that you have with uh, other papers that have seen local events that are then transmitted in the newspapers. So is this a big uh, coverage? Is this a big event on the, uh, is it a shock, a big shock that is reported in the newspapers or not? Can you say something about that? And the second related, so is the, sh is the effect on the coalition so big that that uh, 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 a, a, a party or a, a, a coalition could actually uh, uh, make such a policy so that it wins uh, the elections. Is it so big or, or it's, it's not? Thanks. Uh, thank you so much, Skerdi. These are very valid points. Uh, uh, neither of them I checked yet. So I think uh, they would uh, require uh, some uh, attention in the future. Um, yes, I think uh, I should I should be able to compare uh, this uh, uh, mediatic uh, impact uh, with some uh, other figures available in uh, other uh, contributions. Uh, however, here uh, it's really this uh, type of coefficient is a, a comparison that is uh, very local already, uh, right? So it really compares. Uh, a measure of uh, distance in a very local setting. So it's not even necessarily sure. true that given this local setting, uh, 20 kilometers away, they don't talk uh, as much. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. it is no, not but surprising, I mean. but uh, <laughs> it could also be that uh, there was uh, not such a, such an effect. But I will try to look mm -hmm. at this uh, to us. Exactly, yeah, just to have an idea what are other papers, because this is a hot topic. Uh, so you will certainly find other John, um, other works on this. But what I had in mind is, for instance, I don't know, the case of Cogne in Italy. Uh, was it the same effect mm -hmm. on the weight on the on the media of the uh, on the area around or or less right just mm -hmm. to have an idea of how big this is huh? that you have an effect yeah. oh we have discussed it that you have an effect yeah. is not surprising but is it big and how big yeah. it is in in transmitted into the into the elections yeah but thanks very nice thank thanks you thanks a lot thank you okay i don't see other questions 
Okay. So I have one myself. I, yes. I have one, but maybe you've already covered it or yes. something. I think in your conclusion you said that so with the distance uh, as the distance increases, the coverage de uh, decreases, but yes. the, but 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 the slant increases, right? Yes. So does that mean that just like pro migrant uh, newspapers are mostly just right next to a border, or like? In in what uh, in what sense does it go? Like, is it pro pro news pro migrant newspapers who just have less uh, influence, or anti immigrants newspapers that have more influence? Ah, okay, I see what you mean. Um, so, if I look at the patterns over time, I see that uh, the slant increases uh, in average terms. So, the anti immigrant slant increases overall. So. I would say that the areas further away are more anti-immigrant as respect to saying that the areas uh, um, uh, closest are uh, now pro-immigrant, if that's uh, what you uh, were asking. Yeah, I think so. I think I, so my question was like, does newspaper, just pro-migrant pro newspaper just mm -hmm. are less uh, uh, present in areas far from the border? Okay, at newspaper level, at outlet level, that's yeah. your question. So yes, I didn't dig too much into this aspect. Um, so uh, because what I seem to see, uh, but this is a bit more qualitatively, I see that there is a, a basically a big uh, demand drive in publishing uh, this uh, local news in the sense that if I want, there, there were in a couple of uh, this uh, news that I saw uh, in these outlets, uh, a reader at some point wants to write a letter uh, to complain about this migrant situation. They can simply write a letter to the uh, local news, the local news publish it. And then some other reader that has an opposite view comments uh, with another letter to the reader. So there was this uh, big demand push. So um, in this paper that I cite uh, by, um, uh, sorry, um, Mulay Nathan and uh, uh, Schleifer, uh, 2005, what they discuss is that it could happen that uh, you have uh, uh, singularly um, more extreme uh, positions, but that in an aggregate uh, term, you may have a lower bias. So if you take all the news together, this, is, this may result into lower bias. But yes, it's important also, you're right that uh, many of these uh, contributions look at the uh, slant that goes at the outlet uh, level, but they, they take uh, uh, national outlets. Whilst for the local outlets, I have the impression that uh, it's a bit more mixed uh, altogether. This is uh, my impression. This is why I took this uh, other approach. Okay. Yeah, but uh, yes, you're right that uh, um, maybe I can look if I can produce something that uh, goes more at the uh, outlet level. Thank you, Etienne. And uh, yeah, I don't think, like, scary. I don't know if you just forgot to uh, like lower your hand. No, okay. <laughs> no so, I just <laughs> forgot yeah. to take it down. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, okay, so. I just continue with another question. Since I don't see any more. Um, when you compare like the performance of the cross validation yes. uh, algorithm with the Amazon mechanical tool, yes. so we see that I think there is more or less the same uh, accuracy, right, between the two. Between uh, uh... between cross validation and uh, human classification. Uh, so what I see here is a. Uh, um... So I cannot compare the quality of the human classification oh, okay. because I do it on the unlabeled set. Yeah? Yes. So what yeah. I can compare is the classification of humans with the classification of my own algorithm. Yeah. So what I can do in order to test a little bit the quality of this human classification is to compare because I, I asked the same question because I remember, uh, and thanks to you, I think I, I did something uh, because we, we discussed about this uh, uh, slant uh, measuring before and uh, thanks to some of uh, the comments that were raised uh, by you and by some other colleagues, uh, I think I, I did something additional on these measures that helped me out. So uh, what I realized, uh, so I, I have the same, uh, um, questions, so the same article uh, to be uh, uh, assigned a slant. Um, 
two respondents were uh, answering for that particular article. So I do have a tiny measure of variability. So what I did check is uh, how many times these two respondents disagree. And I find that they disagree uh, for uh, uh, almost 30% of the cases which I find uh, quite high personally, uh, because it uh, really means uh, that uh, it's not so evident to classify slant for, in, in this case, uh, these are uh, respondents that, uh, uh, you know, are um, strangers and uh, they sh there shouldn't be any, maybe randomly there is some expert, uh, but uh, otherwise it's uh, uh, people uh, that are taken randomly. And and both like both uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk and uh, cross validated, so we're uh, training on the label the data set, right? Or no? So the the so the Amazon Mechanical Turk is this platform in which I can uh, find the respondents. So it's like going into a university and ask people to do that. Okay, so but I, I did it online with this platform. So. People uh, were having, uh, so I gave them a description of the task, uh, you know, with some introduction, and then I asked them, uh, please uh, uh, give, uh, read this uh, uh, local news uh, article. And I was giving them this article, please read it and uh, tell me uh, whether according to you, there is uh, or not this uh, slanted content. Mm -hmm. So I gave them a little bit uh, of context in order to have them a little bit more informed, but then it comes to their own uh, judgment. Uh, in the end. And uh, so, um, yes, whereas for my algorithm, then yes, in that case, uh, I can do the cross validation. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot, Etienne.